Hello folks, it's Johnny again, and I hope you're holding up well, considering the situation at the moment, everywhere. So, in any case, that should not prevent us from listening to some mixes and giving some feedback. So, shall we get right in with the first one by Sahin Onua Hukumin? It's standing right here. <laughs> So all with virtual instruments. Interesting. Let's give it a listen. So what I noticed right away is the guitars have a lot going on in that 2K range and not a whole lot of brightness above that. I think you could balance that out a little bit more because it feels disconnected to the drums. The drums feel very nicely balanced and bright and whatnot. So you want to make sure that it kind of fits together tonally. So I of course don't know what exactly you did to get those tones so i would start out just you know very simple just no post eq just look for proper settings on your amp simulation and also find a proper cabinet ir that will already make it sound very close to what you want so you have to do less tweaking later on and that should get you in the ballpark i don't know about these virtual instruments uh, do they pro Produce the distorted tone themselves, or do they just produce a DI signal of sorts? Because I would, if the, you can make it that they only give you a DI signal, then I would recommend that you try to uh, dial in that tone yourself with amp simulation and impulse responses. And of course, now I try to make it that any link that I can share. I will share also for everybody else. So if someone sends me a YouTube link or a SoundCloud link, if that's okay with anybody who sends me a link, um, that I also share that in the description below. So if there's something among all of this that people like, then they can check it out for themselves. And yeah, you also get a little bit of promotion on that. Although, I mean, with my little YouTube channel, I don't know how much that will really help you. Anyways, let's go to the next one. Yevgeny Stupak. Hey, wait, I remember that name. Okay, um, the symbols are definitely a little bit on the harsher side and they are quite loud. Also the drums sound very roomy, although it's in a stylistic way that it would still make sense. So I'd say you don't really need to tweak that specifically. But the symbols could definitely, first of all, come down a little bit. Perhaps don't compress them too much because otherwise you get a consistent wash. And well, when you go for a very extreme sound, like extreme feel, then 
that can easily be a little bit overbearing. So you want to be careful with that. So definitely take down the volume of the overheads a little bit and probably also from the room mics if you have a lot of the symbols in the room mics and then perhaps also uh, dip down a little bit of that harshness around 4K somewhere in that region uh, just to make sure the symbols don't become overbearing and make the whole mix too harsh. Uh, the kick drum could benefit from more high-end click to cut through the mix a little bit more. Right now, you feel it more as a low-end thumb that's punching through real hard. But with the way the sounds and with the denseness of everything and everything going on in that upper mid-range, the kick drum kind of feels a little bit too poofy in that sense when it doesn't have that click to punch through. Also, the guitars, uh, gotta be honest, they, they, they sound more like that consistent white noise rather than a real defined guitar tone. And you don't have a lot of note definition in your tone. It's more this constant shh sound again. And of course, that's again something that's uh, not too easy to, to figure out where it comes from. Easiest solution would be just to get the, the proper amp simulator and proper impulse response without any post EQ or any crazy tweaking. Just get a very basic tone as close to what you want as possible before you do anything crazy beyond that. So next one is by Breakdown Minister 0409. He still has a second mix for me to check out. By the way, the vocals are a bit quiet in here. Could definitely come up a couple of the B. Okay, and then the low end, well, with that consistent double kick going on, it does make sense that the kick itself doesn't have too much low end punch. Well, just not too strong of a low end because otherwise you have this constant low going on and of course you don't want that. Um, but I guess it could be a little bit more, I feel like note definition in the bass guitar. I'm not feeling a lot of definition in there, to be honest, right now. My brain is also so melted, I can't quite think of a clear solution because I don't quite see the problem. I gotta listen a bit more carefully.
Yeah, for now, I would just kind of raise the whole low end of the mix a little bit, just to give it a bit more richness and power down there, but then make sure that the low end on the palm end of the rhythm guitars don't become overbearing. You perhaps want to put a bit more control on that before you just go on boosting the low end of the whole mix. But otherwise, this is very solid. And then you also ask about how I would go about mixing bass guitars for drop E tuning. Well, for starters, I would probably just go with my general approach and see what happens. To be honest, I haven't mixed bass guitars that low yet. So I would have to see what the problem would be. You would definitely need a bass guitar that can actually handle that low of a tuning very well. So in normal scale length for bass is, I think, 34 inches. Correct me if I'm wrong. And while tuning that, a whole octave lower is not really gonna cut it. Imagine you have a standard guitar with 25.5 inch scale and you tune that a whole octave lower. No string gauge will compensate for the problems of the low short length. So the same also, of course, goes for bass guitar. You definitely need a longer scale length and very thick strings. And then the pickups also need to be able to produce a nicely clean, defined low end. If you have a cheap bass that's just giving you a kind of mushy low end, then uh, no amount of tone tweaking later on will really help you. I personally find that single coils on bass guitar actually sound really good for very low tunings because they inherently are a bit more scooped in the mid-range, have a bit more brightness and a bit more richer and defined low end. So that could definitely work to your advantage, but I suppose it's not completely a must. And then, yeah, for mixing, I would just go with the two track method for bass guitars again, one for clean low end that's compressed a whole lot, one for the gritty mid range, and then you blend the two. And of course for the clean low end, I mean you actually filter everything down to about 200 hertz. And for the gritty mid range, you filter the low end up to 200 hertz. Okay, so they don't interfere with each other. And then you blend them to taste. And I usually use TH3 for my bass guitar tones. Uh, the Ampac in there, plus an Ampac cap impulse from Rosen Digital sounds just so good. And I've been doing this for years now for my bass tones and I, I don't feel any need to change my approach there. So yeah. Next one is by Phil. Uh, with the vocals, I immediately notice they they sound very breathy and airy. And there's not a lot of mid-range to give you a nicely defined tone in in that scream. So you definitely want to match that EQ balance a little bit. Ugh, you can notice I'm tired. I'm really tired. Yeah, that for one. So not too much high end. And then a bit more mid-range in that 1K, roughly speaking, and compress it a whole lot, a little bit of parallel distortion, and let's check out the rest. Yeah, 
Yeah, otherwise, stylistically, this all fits together very well. I would personally just raise the volume of the snare drum a little bit. And also the kick drum, I would personally give it a little bit more high-end click. But otherwise, this is perfectly enjoyable, I think. So last one for today is by Dragtron. Once again, and let's check this one out. I still hear clipping in there, quite prominently. And the either the cymbals or the drums as a whole uh, it sounds like you put quite the low pass filter on there. Especially the cymbals, you notice they kind of sound dull and dark. So you definitely want to keep a bit more brightness in there and sparkle because they fill up that range above the guitars very much. And right now, they don't sit too well, in my opinion. The symbols almost sound like they have some kind of phasing issue. Uh, if you put parallel processing on your drums or on, on the overheads or whatever, you definitely want to make sure you enable, um, what's it called, plugin delay compensation. So you don't get that, that problem. At least I think that would fix that problem. I hope so. I don't want to spread any false information, of course. But I'm definitely hearing something that's not quite right in the symbols. And the rhythm guitars could definitely benefit from some work on that low end because they are quite strong there and they kind of mush up the low end a little bit. The way I usually go about with rhythm guitars these days, when they have too much low end, I don't just put a low pass filter, a uh, high pass filter on there. Uh, usually I first take a normal EQ band at around 100 hertz or where it's most prominent and I dip that down a couple of dB with a white belt just to make the tone a bit more balanced, first of all. And then I use a high pass filter, usually just about at 100 Hertz, not really higher than that. And that way you keep a little bit of depth in that frequency range, but it's not too loud or too strong, so it completely messes up the low end. So, and then you ask about the proper way to get loudness. I highly, highly recommend you watch uh, a video by Mixbus TV. Wait, what's it called? I gotta check this out again. He specifically talks about loudness. Exactly. Just type in Mixbus TV loudness. You will immediately find that video. Loudness is not a mastering. It's all about the mix. The secret to loud mixes crest factor. That is important. Crest factor means how, basically how big is the dynamic range of your mix? How high are the peaks and where's the big chunk of the waveform? And how do you get those to be a little bit closer together so you can get it louder than later on in the mastering stage? Very great video, check that out. If you want to have a TLDR, saturation is king. 
I usually put a saturator on just on my drum bass, which catches the peaks, adds a little bit of, of punch also to the drums and fills up a little bit of the frequency range so it sounds a little bit richer. And then after that, I put a clipper to make sure that the peaks don't exceed a certain level. And then I just use a normal limiter later on on uh, my master bus. That's it. So it's really more about getting the peaks of the drums under control before you go into the mastering stage. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to send me your mixes to review, then send it to johnnymixcrit at gmail.com and I will take a look at it sooner or later. Yeah, and have a good one.